VFLs, Visual Fault Locators. We're going to talk about these guys today. Specifically, these guys. These Visual Fault Locators are advertised as 20 milliwatt and 30 milliwatt. These are high powered Visual Fault Locators guaranteed to work to 30 kilometers. Want to know the answer to that? Stick around. Okay, so as we said, these guys here are Amazon specials. They're advertised as 30 milliwatts, and if you go on Amazon, you know, 20 milliwatts on this one, 30 milliwatts on this one. And if you go on Amazon, they'll say a 30 kilometer uh, VFL. I've actually seen manufacturers now advertising theirs as 10, 20, 30 kilometers. Um, I question that. I, I wanted to understand if that was true. And uh, I thought we'd put it to the test. So we're going to put these guys away because these are all under. These are the, the standard one milliwatt. And uh, obviously, if these won't go 30 kilometers or 10 kilometers or however, neither will those. So let's talk about the test bed. So first off, as usual, we're always going to scope our connectors, make sure that we have no influence um, by dirt and uh, we're not damaging connectors. The test bed is simple. I was going to go ahead and do five kilometers, six kilometers, seven kilometers and see where these things fail. But I thought I'd just cut to the chase and actually try to keep this to be a short video. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this. This is a 25.115 kilometer spool of fiber. It's got a couple perfect connectors on it and there's only two splices in it. So this is a continuous piece of fiber for 25 kilometers, which means that the loss that you would experience in this and the loss that these guys are going to be um, encountering is far less than what we'd see in an actual network with multiple connectors, patch panels, splices, macro bends, micro bends, all the fun things that go with fiber optics. These guys operate at 635 to 650 uh, nanometers, plus minus, you know, they're, they're about a plus minus 20 or so, 20 nanometers. You can't use just a regular power meter off of a OTDR or a handheld power meter. Um, you have to use something that's going to detect that, you know, the range of light that we need it to detect or know the correction factor. So the, the power meters that we have are just diodes, photodiodes, and they receive the light and they change or do a correction factor based on the calculus that you put into it. In other words, the 1490, the 1550, 1310, 850, whatever number you put in there as the number of the, the wavelength, it's going to do a correction calculation. So on this guy, this is specifically designed to test um, lower nanometer lasers all right so this guy goes 405 nanometers to 830. so what will happen is we're going to put the light into here we're going to measure it that's our photodiode and then we're going to come to this little table here so this table has a correction factor to it if you look down the side um, assuming you can read this 405 and it goes down and then we get down here to about 650 and it has a correction factor of 0.95. So you take the reading, multiply it by the 0.95, and it's going to give you the actual value. This is a, uh, a fully certified, you know, not NIST, but it's a, cert a totally certified um, meter and has uh, a certificate of calibration with it. So yeah, I trust it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take this and we're just going to shine it straight into there now when we turn this on we're going to set it to the 40 milliwatt range and we can already see that we're getting a reading here and that reading is because of the led lights we're using for the uh, the video we made a little adapter that will go over this and actually block out the studio lights and that will give us a zero on this and so as we shine or put our connector in there we're only going to be reading the vfl light if we take this and take our VFL and we're going to shove that right on top of there and we're going to look and it's going to say about 14 okay and again I'm thinking that we got a little bit of influence so let's cover that up okay so we got about a 13 eh, we'll call it 13.5 just for grins 
So we're going to take our official calculator here. We're going to do uh, 13.5 times, and we'll go to our correction table and go to 650. That's a dot nine five. So times dot nine five is 12.8. So this guy here, advertised as 30 milliwatts, is actually outputting 12.8 milliwatts. All right, let's look at this guy and see what he says, just for fun. So these are fresh batteries put in here. And this guy here is a 20, and he's reading, block the light as best we can. So he's reading 8.3, according to the documentation on here. This is a... Um, 650 again, so that again was a 0.82. So we'd go do our calculation. Uh, I'm sorry, 8.2. So 8.2 times 0.95 equals uh, 779. So 7.8. So again, you know, right off the bat, these things are putting out somewhat less than what's actually advertised. I'm sure that what they're doing is they're advertising the output uh, value of the laser and not taking into consideration the output at this end. So, all right. So just for grins, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that all of our connectors are clean. Um, we're going to take our 25 kilometer spool and, uh, we're going to use the APC connector down here, so that way we know these are typically, a, a, they are a contact, there's a UPC in there, type of connector, and um, we're going to make sure that we don't have any influence on the angle of this. So let's go ahead and, uh, as always, scope our connectors, make sure that we're not influenced by any dirt blocking the light or the transmission of light. All right, we got a little bit of dirt on there, so we'll go ahead and clean that, do another test real quick. Okay, that looks nice and clean. We'll plug that into our little uh, shield. Now this is set up so that it's it's actually very close to the uh, to the actual sensor, so we don't have a big air gap in there. And that looks nice and clean. And finally, just to just to keep everything on the up and up, we're going to use our um, our custom tip here that was manufactured by us to. Um, to actually test the VFL because there is a connector in here. And so we go and we're going to put this over the VFL and this way we can test and actually see if we got dirt anywhere in there. Make sure that, uh, okay, we got a few, a few little schmutzes in there. So we're going to get those gone. All right. That looks nice and clean. And here we go. We're going to go ahead, pop that in, and presto. Nothing. Bupkis. Not an iota of light. Nothing measurable. And this is going to 1 one hundredth of a milliwatt. Let's take this down to 4 milliwatts. Now we're measuring to a granularity of 1 one thousandth of a milliwatt, and still no light is coming out of this end. Crazy, huh? Okay, so we're gonna use our microscope here. And we've done this at about um, seven kilometers. And uh, you would actually have to have something along this type of uh, equipment just to see the small glint of light on the face of this connector. And so you can see the small dot right in the middle, too much coffee this morning, there's that small dot right there, and there's not one iota of light coming through that. And that's the uh, that's your fiber that's cladding there. So, um, again, this kind of disproves. I mean, you, you can't argue with these results. This guy is on. He's nice and bright. Again, there's no denying that this absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, will not go. 30 kilometers. I mean, it doesn't even make 25 kilometers. So anyway, that's it. This is like a short video. We just uh, did the proof. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know. Give again, give us a comment. 
If you want to see a video where we did the whole test and went through, we can reset that again and uh, just kind of add all the different, uh, what we did was we added a thousand kilometers at a time until it just became unusable. So anyway, we'd like to thank you if you're currently subscribed. If you're not a subscriber, we ask that you please consider. It does help out the channel. Again, if there's anything you want to see or have any questions, feel free to post those in the comments below. We try to answer as quickly as possible. And until next time, be safe and thanks for watching.